I'm going to work on my chins. <laughs> Keep my head up. <laughs> we looks like we have 11 people registered. Oh, great. Great. Excellent. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Good evening. Hi. We have uh, we have about a dozen uh, artists who are registered for this as well as um, a few arts administrators that are on here who are partners in the project. So we'll just wait a few minutes for everybody to get on. Great. Thanks. I hope everybody is being warm, someplace warm this weekend. Oops. All right, here comes some more people. So we're just waiting on a few more people, everyone, and then we will get started. I'm going to mute just because I got people coming in the house.
waiting on a few more people. So a couple more people might come in. Um, I just wanted to say hello to everyone. And as people are coming in, I'll allow them in and I don't wanna be disruptive, but it's nice to see all of you. Some of you I know, some of you I don't, but nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Belinda Colon. I am the curator at the Art Center of the Capital Region and two other colleagues, uh, three other colleagues of mine are on this call as well. Um, when I call out your name, can you quickly give yourself an uh, introduction and introduce your, yourself to everyone? Um, so first I'll start with my uh, director, Elizabeth Reese. Hi everyone, um, I'm Liz Reese, I'm the director of the Art Center and I know most of you, it's nice to see you um, and welcome. And Barbara? Hi, thanks for being here at this hour. Um, Barb Nelson, I'm the director at TAP. I'm an architect and I'm gonna be handling the logistics of the installation. Um, so I'm looking forward to the challenge and it's a challenge. <laughs> and Elizabeth Dubbin. Hey everybody, I'm the director of Collar Works in Troy and proud to be a partner on this project. Thanks for being here. Thank you for joining us. So we're really happy again to have you all here. We're happy to answer any questions you have. Um, we've been trying to continually take the questions that we're receiving online um, and those responses and, and posting them on the website. Um, so if anybody wants to start or has any questions, if you wanna raise your hand and unmute, I'll call your name and, or I'll call your name and you can unmute and we'll try to answer your questions uh, with the best of our ability. You can go ahead, Anne. You're muted though. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. Oh. I did not know if you meant raise your real hand or the little hand on the computer. Either way, it'll be fine. <laughs> I had, I, you answered quite a, you know, already a few of my questions, but I had a few last minute ones about the budget. Um, if I'm, I'm planning to do the design only budget, is the transportation included in it? Transportation. Um, well, I'll, I'll take that. The um, so for the twenty thousand dollar artists fee, mm -hmm. then yes, that needs to include everything that you you need to do to submit to create and submit a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, and that was your question. Are you right? So, so like the follow up yeah. because obviously, even though there there will be a third party contractor, the artist needs to be involved a lot, I would assume, to assess things yeah. that go on. I, and, uh, so that's still going to be included in the design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is it appropriate to pull up that component budget for? Um, yeah, of course. So we realized that there are a lot of parts to this. Um, and so it was really very helpful to me as well to take some time to um, delineate what we consider 
what I, what what we would consider we need from you as um, uh, as design artists and as installation artists. So I put together some a format that you can use, um, and this will be put up on the website. And um, I don't know, Belinda, maybe you'll email it to people too. I, I'm not sure what your communication system is. Well, right now everything is on the um, the artists. The artist, the artist resources page in the okay. Google Share. Um, so everything is there. Um, okay. Do you see my screen with the? I do. Okay. Yeah. I can make this a little larger for you. Yeah, here. zoom in just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, wrong, wrong plus sign. Just a moment. Um. So yeah. So this will this will be saved. This will be saved and uh, it is saved in that file as of right now. So you can go into that right. file, the artist uh, resources file and folder and it'll all be there already. Okay, oh, okay, great. And, and you can make it bigger? Sure. Please, because I can't even read it. Is that any better? No, it's not getting bigger at all. Oh, it's huge on my screen. Um, no, no, no. All right, so what I'm going to do is if you want to, do you want to share it on your screen, Barb? Maybe that'll sure, be Sure, I can, I can do that. Okay, because I have it on my screen. Let me take mine off and you can go ahead. Okay. Anne's original question was, was transportation included? Mm -hmm. And um, we would assume that it would be included in the design fee. The reason we only made this available to area artists would be that there really isn't a very high transportation fee. So I hope that that's not burdensome, uh, that we wouldn't think that there would be a lot of extra transportation fee. But Anne, is there something that maybe we're not thinking about? No, I was just thinking, you, you know, sometimes people can't just mileage back and forth and people, you know, so it's no. part of the budget. So I was wondering if I should put it in or just ignore it. Okay. <laughs> so it's not going to be huge, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can Saratoga. So, can you see um, my screen now? And is it large enough to read? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, this first portion here, this is uh, the twenty thousand dollar artist fee, uh, and I just started to kind of break down what the artists can expect to have to do for that fee. Um, we will be setting up uh, a, a series of community engagement meetings. They might be with um, um, different neighborhood groups or, or uh, organizations. So I'm, I'm thinking that you should figure spending about 16 hours uh, doing that. And that's, you know, once you're selected as the artist, there's kind of the meet and greet and presenting your work, getting some Feedback. We're not expecting you to design this around um, around the community. You're designing it and making a proposal based on all the background we've given you. Um, but it might also be uh, talking to a group of kids about your life as an artist, how you got there, um, and especially expressing why this proposal, why this space inspired you to present the proposal you have presented. Um, so we'll, you know, maybe there's, you know, four or five meetings, maybe 16 hours is high, but, um, but it's just a, it's a placeholder. Um, I expect that once you're selected and we have the artwork in front of us, that I'm going to need you to spend a good deal of time with me and my staff and talk about, um, how is this being, especially if, if you've submitted only for the design concept, you know, how are we going to do your work justice? You know, are we going to layer certain colors? Are we going to start with certain paints? You know, how are we going to approach it? You know, are we using spray? Are we using uh, um, brushes? Are, are we using spray can? You know, what kind of people are we hiring to, to put it together? Um, and likewise, if you are the painter yourself, you know, how many people are you going to have? How many lifts are we going to need? All of that kind of thing. Um, there is some kind of figure that you are uh, figuring on that you are, there's, there's an expense to your own materials, whether you're using software, Photoshop, or, or downloading things, um, or you're producing storyboards, or you're producing videos, you know, whatever it is, 
uh, that's your cost. That's included in your 20. Um, the, um, again, if you are submitting just as the concept proposal, um, or whether you, yeah, I, I think if you're submitting, then we're gonna expect you, yes, to come to the site very often to look at, um, you know, the work that we've, the, the approach we've taken, look at the work we're doing, look at the quality, look at the, um, you know, colors, are we, you know, are we getting that right, you know, before the colors go up? So, so that kind of back and forth, and I just figure, you know, that's something around 20 hours. So maybe that's six visits at a couple hours each. Um, you know, whether you have assistance helping you with your proposal, I don't know, um, but that's, you know, that's your cost as well in the 20. Um, and then, you know, when you, when you take out all these specifics, um, you know, the, the value that's left over, that's your actual design stipend. So all of this rolls into your stipend and it cannot exceed that $20,000. Um, but this, this is just a, a format, a help, a guide, if it helps you. Um, we're not necessarily going to analyze each one of these, but it gives us a sense that yes, you've thought about these things. Um, so it, again, that's just a, and, and we may have totally missed something. I'm not a, an artist who creates and, and makes proposals. I'm an architect, so, but I just know that there are certain procedures and costs involved in making a proposal. Um, then if you are actually proposing to do the site installation yourself, there are things to consider. You're, you're not expecting just to walk away with $125,000 in your pocket, you know, for having painted. Um, you're going to have to actually purchase the paint out of that. And a little help, you know, an average five gallon bucket of paint I can buy for $70. Um, you can probably, in, in buying a, a quantity, um, find it for less. And these are things I can kind of help you with once you're selected and we know what materials you need. I can help guide you, but you're going to be um, including that purchase in your 125 total. Um, you're going to need handheld equipment. I went on Harbor Freight and totaled up a couple thousand dollars of equipment. I think, you know, brushes and rollers and all of that stuff. Some of it disposable. You might need some actual power equipment. Um, we're expecting that we're going to have to first um, wash the thing down with a power washer. So getting we, meaning the team involved in doing the installation. So if your team is, if you are proposing to do all of the installation yourself, you're gonna to wanna to hook up a power washer. I'll help you find the water, I'll help you find the hoses, um, but you're gonna to need to have the power washer and have as many people and as many power washers as you as you need, you know, for the amount of time you, you gauge. Um, and I have to say, if we can convince DOT to do the power washing, we'll absolutely let you know that, and that will free up more money for for other things within this 125. But at this point, we don't know. We haven't heard yet from DOT whether they're going to require their contractors to wash it all down. Um, um, scissor lift. I looked um, the average monthly cost. So I, I just put these in as, as little helps. You may have a lift. You may know someone who has a lift and can give it to you for less. Um, 30 feet, you're not gonna need 30 feet on every set of piers. And you're gonna need more than 30 feet on some sets of piers. So these are things that you're gonna have to factor in to that total value. It's all gotta come out of that 125. Um, scaffold, on rollers, you know, on wheels that you can move around. And if you've got six people painting with you, you might want six of them. You know, I, I don't know how you're going to approach it. Some of the artwork is gonna be very intricate and time intensive and perhaps uh, um, uh, you know, require a team of, of artistic helpers. Um, some may be very simple, done with, with uh, mostly with, with large spray motion. So, you are the one that knows your artwork, your concept, your proposal. Um, but I'm so I'm just saying, hey, don't forget, you got to get up there. <laughs> so um, this is just intended to help you. Um, the actual painters, 
how many people are you going to have on site? How long are you going to have them there? What are you going to pay them each hour? Now, if you plug things into this, so if I plug in a two, oh, this is not live. Oh, enable editing. Okay. If I plug in, okay, I need two scissor lifts at one, two, two, five. It's going to calculate the values for you. And then it's going to bring it down here um, to give you a total. I'll take those out. But so the, the spreadsheet that is posted on the shared drive, um, it's an active sheet. So you might want to, well, it'll always be there. So if you, you know, mess it up or change the values, you can always go back and get a fresh one. Um, and I'm sorry this is coming at you at such a, a late date, but it took us, um, it did take me some time to, to realize how much we needed this um, and, uh, and to throw some, some sample numbers together. Um, barricades, if you're going to have lifts and scaffolds and ladders and you don't want to pack them up and put them away every night, then um, some amount of temporary fencing, some security that can, you can um, pull together around, you know, the pier that you're working on, that kind of thing. Um, there's a great place just a couple blocks up in the neighborhood, Troy Chain Link Fence. They're great with... Uh, and it's not really expensive stuff, but it's just things we need you to think about. Um, storage, if you don't have a big truck to drive around with all your paint and equipment, then um, we're gonna need some sort of site storage. Uh, we may have a solution for that. Uh, if we are able to implement that, then this is something um, that the dollars can shift from here into your labor budget. Um, insurance, maybe I'll let Liz or one of the others uh, address this, but you need to carry a $10,000 um, item. We've had it quoted. We've had it uh, where, where we have some understanding what the city needs, what the art center needs. And um, we are giving you this number as an allowance to carry. So of your 125,000, make sure you've got 10,000 in there for insurance. Uh, anything else that I've forgotten that I've missed throw in as many columns as you like. Um, and then it's always good to have a, a contingency you know, because there is something we've forgotten, um, throw a number in there, but the, the total should not exceed that 125,000. So we just don't want anybody to come in and say, oh, I'm gonna paint it myself. And then, oh no, I didn't know I needed, you know, a 14 foot ladder. I've only got two weights, you know. Um, it's, this is, a really big, big undertaking. Uh, we feel good about the budget and we just want everybody. And you know, if you, if you uh, estimate all these things and you find out that it's just not, uh, that the, the remaining stipend, you know, the fee for actually painting, your time actually painting is not enough, then either, you know, then you may wanna uh, consider uh, whether you wanna uh, submit or, or whether your proposal is, is perhaps um, too detailed or, or complicated. Um, so that this is, you'll find this on the site. Any questions before I take it down? I'm sure there's now has a question. Got to be questions. <laughs> yeah, you list uh, 125,000 that it can't exceed, but on your website, you list 145,000 as your total. Does this include the $20,000 um, uh, initial value at the top? Yes, yes, that 145 is together. Is that right, Belinda, I got that? Yeah, yes. 145. And the insurance costs that you, um, I've, I've been quoted a much lower cost. Can you describe a little bit more what that insurance, uh, why that is such a large number? Okay, um, Liz, do you mind? Um, yes, yeah, so hi, um, we, so the, the way that this is most likely going to go is um, that the city is going to hold the permit for the job because the Department of Transportation is probably going to ask the city to hold the permit. And then the city is going to need to have this insured. Uh, and they are hope, the assumption right now is that it's probably best for everyone to have a an ongoing insurance company that would be able to service a claim two or three years from now if something happens, that this isn't just an issue of insuring it for the six weeks of production, but that it has a long-term implication. 
So number one, it's how are we going to have a policy in place that has a, a longer uh, period of coverage? Uh, two, how are we having a, a, a coverage in place that covers and co-insures New York State Department of Transportation, the City of Troy, the Art Center of the Capital Region, TAP, Collar Works, and then any of the other uh, partners that may come up and, and what the cost of that would be. Um, in order to have a permit with the city, whether they're carrying their own or they're just asking us for evidence of insurance, uh, we need to show workman comps insurance and it has to be um, scaffold raid workman comps insurance. Uh, so what we did is we asked our insurance agent to uh, develop a cost of what that is. And it is any, the lowest is 7,000, depending on Department of Transportation's final criteria, it may go up to 10. Uh, we haven't gotten the final number from DOT as to their limits. Right now we're limited at a million dollar per occurrence. Theirs may be higher. Okay. So that is the overall um, assumption on this. Also, honestly, Fernando, we want to make sure that uh, whatever we carry, we are damn sure it will pay out and that we're putting the, the weight of the art center's 20 year relationship with their, with our aggregate insurer that we will not face a, this wasn't written the right way or, or this isn't what we're gonna do or we're not going to cover it kind of um, uh, concern for your behalf um, as, as well as for anyone else's. So that is what we are at arriving at. Okay, that's, thank you. I have another related question. Um, mm -hmm. My contractor has asked if um, we should include the cost of graffiti, anti-graffiti quote on the, on the, and should we, if, if we do, uh, my budget goes way over. Um, and is that a cost that should be maybe extended to you guys? I don't know, it's just a question that came up. You should just show it to us as a separate and if it goes over, let us view that. Okay, all right. Is that a fair answer? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's excellent. Thank you. And I think for any of you, if if there's an issue where something goes over, just just let us see that. Um, as this goes into finalist and we pick a number of finalists, it's an opportunity to carve back into these budgets and test it, and ask questions, and get more information on why, how, and where, and how we may be able to arrive at what we need to do. Okay. Thank you. I mean, absolutely. This is not the kind of uh, review process that's going to, we're not just going to look at the bottom line and say, oh, don't, you know, we're going to be looking at your artwork and your proposals. And if it's compelling enough and your budget seems hinky, we're going to sit and talk to you. Um, but please, you know, be as thorough as possible, um, just so you don't leave yourself hanging. And, um, you know, that anti-graffiti covering, that is something that I did not, you know, think of when I, I, I did this and somebody said, hey, what about anti-graffiti? So, and it is expensive, um, but I do expect that you wouldn't have to cover the entire pier. Um, 12 feet really. up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was right. thinking too. And it's, and it's, a, it's $100 a gallon. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive stuff. It really does work, um, but it is expensive, so. And again, for anyone listening to any of this and whether there's a, a cost that you're looking at, um, because there is a finalist period, this, this can be examined together uh, and we can make sure that it is what we need it to be. Um, and that's, that's really right now what we can do. If somebody manages to get a bunch of stuff donated and then the money goes a different way, talk yeah. with us, right? Yeah. Um, this isn't just gonna be a, here's a check and go away kind of thing. There's a lot to make sure it goes right. Yeah, definitely. I have other questions, but I want to let others ask them, and I'll I'll, I'll come back around. Ann? Ann, you had a question. Microphone. Oh, you're you're muted again. <laughs> Mute. Okay. Gotcha. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
I need to do it by hand. I need a clarification about the community involvement. So what you mean by that is mostly having people engage in the process rather than actually painting on the mural. Here we can't, I mean, because it's, um, if you, if any of you have uh, a proposal that includes community design, just explain that. Um, there, I can imagine someone may come and say, you know, my concept is, is very fluid because I'm going to speak with this community and with the youth and with the elders and I'm going to build these things into the design. Um, just explain that. Um, if, if that's not the case, if you've come out with a concept that is uh, um, quite refined, well along, um, then the way to engage community is to help them understand, you know, why that, um, why that, you know, what inspired you to that design. And uh, we're not expecting that you're going to design this with community input necessarily, unless that's your approach. If that's your approach, then then just yeah, explain it's that. Necessarily, it's not necessarily input. It's just uh, community members contributing sections of the mural that are integrated into my own design, something like that. So that's still the question I had regarding the initial design, because that would include, that would involve workshops that would be a little more involved. And where, that would be, so. that would be great. Um, then you probably would be spending uh, more hours and um, that might actually kind of span these two well, you know, just to explain it to the best uh, of your ability. It, th this, th this was just my, you know, really rough sense of. Uh, Let me. Can I? Can I speak to that just for a minute? Please. Yeah. Let me. Um. If I if I can just speak to it just for a minute though, um, if so, working with the community, it can be that you work with them and they do plan out certain elements, and that's something that you want to do. There is. Um, having a well-realized design that you just, that we are going to ask you to discuss with the community and just engage with your process. And it might be that we have a, an artist along with you that um, does some work with kids if that's appropriate. No one's saying that it doesn't have to be appropriate, but anyway, there it is. Or I mean that it doesn't have to happen that way. But what Anne, you're speaking to is a design element where you're having the community come in and do it. If that's the case, you have to get that community together you have, to, you have to organize that community. You have to train it to the degree that they are operating safely. And then you have to oversee those community members. Right. So it wouldn't be appropriate to say, uh, I'm gonna give you this blank canvas and um, your purpose is to do it. That has to be your program to do so. So, so that would be within, so again, it's kind of a budget question. So that would be within that, in that design budget? Because in my yes. view, I thought it would be extra. Is it almost like no? Yeah, it's um... no. I mean, it again. Mm -hmm. If you are doing something quite unique, and your mind has this in your mind, and I can't read it today, you can put it down on this paper and say, "This is what I'm really talking about. This is what I'm doing," and based on the clarity of your design, and if it reaches one that we say this has really got potential. We'll talk back with you and make sure we understand what you're doing, right? And say, okay, can you please explain this? Mm -hmm. But just to be clear, we're, we wouldn't be able to say, we, right now we just don't have the budget to say, let's spend $125,000 on a great installation, but then also let's spend another 20,000 on a community component to also paint it, right? There's just not a lot of extra in our uh, fundraising scope to see that easily right now. But let's just see what it looks like and take it from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. And I could add, we are um, in contact. Uh, we know a number of community groups and people to call and you know a, a church or a youth group or whatever. So we can help bring the the right people together. Mm -hmm. um, we'll help you do that. We're not going to set you out on your own to just, you know, go pamphlet and see who shows up. Um, we, we have a good network for that. Resources. Perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Fernando, you had another question. 
so yeah, uh, mine, it has to do with uh, time. Uh, on your call, you list late spring, which is an ambiguous term, but let's say that's late May. Um, and then June, July 1 as uh, the terminal, um, that's basically a month. How fixed are you guys on that, in, on that mm -hmm. timeline? We actually, we actually need to start the project and try to get it done by that date. We, um, you know, this project is funded by um, another organization that has given us an extension that would um, like to see it done by that date. And that's, that's why we have that goal in mind. Um, and we would really like to stick with that as much as possibly able to. So that's where that, that timeline is coming in. Which is, which is why this isn't a one person per peer kind of paint job. This has to be a team-based paint job. This can't be, I need to take 20 weeks to do this on my own and, and, and do that. Now, that's an ex ex exaggeration. Hang on, Rachel, let me just finish with this just for a minute. The other issue is you just don't want to keep the insurance exposure that long, right? Because the longer your environment, the longer the permits open, the more the art center and, and its partners are co-insuring every activity that goes on down there because the permit is an open insured period. Um, so that's that's another way to look at it. Anyway, so Rachel. There, can you start sooner than May? I mean, I know there's weather to consider. Um, uh, Fernando, you mentioned late May. If you were organized and prepared to begin at the beginning of May and weather allows, yeah, sure. Uh, it and depends. you start as soon as you're ready, uh, basically? The Department of Transportation has stopped their work, uh, and we can find out if we can start earlier, uh, okay. and, and we can look at that. We can also look at what a week or two on the other side looks like. It, it, it's not, heads won't roll if this goes mm -hmm. in either direction a little bit, uh, if, if there are delays, because obviously if we hit, you know, two weeks of torrential rain, yeah. right, <laughs> things have to shift, and, and we're sensitive to that. Um, and so that's, that's true on either side. So the answer is it is a little elastic on either side. It should not, what we really want people to, to be very aware of is it, it needs to have a, 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 a planned approach of how many hours you believe it's going to be, how many people you're going to have working on it so that it is reasonably completed or intended to be complete within a scope of time. Thank you. Yeah, and again, to go back, what's, what's important also what Liz said is that we were on the schedule of DOT. And so we were pushing out the schedule um, to make sure that that space is safe and ready for installation as well. So that's a super important uh, you know, reason why he said spring and didn't give you an exact date or an exact month to start because we wanted to make sure everything was ready. Okay, thank you. Kendra? Um, I know there's a geographic limiting parameter for the people submitting a bid, but is there, are there any such limitations on people that we have in mind to hire? No, you're okay. the lead where you live, you bring in talent from wherever you need to do to do Got this it. is, is your business. Um, yeah. Thank you. Now, in order to ensure them correctly through the art center and to activate the workman's comp, um, we, we can do this two ways. Um, we can pay you to pay them and you can show evidence of workman comp, which actually kind of is a duplicate thing. And so maybe not in your best interest or we're gonna pay them at which point uh, to keep them on payroll, we need to make sure that they have all of the proper um, uh, certification to be employed by a company in New York State. Thanks. If that's clear. Yep. Any further questions? Rachel, I know that you had emailed us some things before the meeting. Is there anything on there that you um, would like to focus on or that we haven't spoken about? I'm sorry, I didn't print it out and I forgot what I said. <laughs> Well, um, I can I can share a couple of the things if that's what you want me to do. If you feel like what you wrote to me was important for the process for everyone else as well, I can I can move forward with. Sure, why not? 
Um, if anybody else doesn't have, if anybody else has any other questions first, Chris. Um, yeah, so I'm a little late to this game. I just found out about this whole proposal thing like yesterday or so um, that uh, I was just curious uh, if how much this uh, proposal, if I have ready for submission, if that's going to be affecting how I get judged or should I just focus more on the artwork side of this or like for, for the time restraints I'm under or is there any way for an extension for a few days or, um, or how, how, you know, anything along those lines. I mean, to be honest, thank you for being truthful about the fact that you need an extension. Um, it's not something that we thought about doing, but it doesn't mean that, you know, if say we get, you know, Friday and I get two applications, you know, there might be a chance that we can extend it further. Um, we can keep in touch with you if you want to apply and we see that, you know, there are certain things that are missing that we need to adjust or we need to make sure that you have in the application, I would say try to get everything filled out as we requested. And then if there are things that you hadn't had a chance to do, we can follow up if we feel like the artwork itself is strong enough. Maybe you can focus on the design rather than implementation or however that is that you feel most comfortable with this project. If you're someone that always implements the work and likes to be on the job painting, then we would need as much as possible on the full project. Um, and, you know, if, as again, if you were just to submit the design process portion of it, then you would have a little more time to adjust if you decided that you did want to implement it. But the quality of your design is going to drive your ability to get into finalist. The, the, your artwork is going to drive your ability to become a finalist, which gives us the opportunity to open a dialogue about your budget. So are, are, is this about the amount of people then? So we're saying there's about seven people submitting or is there, or is that okay to ask or? I mean, this I'm is, just, our, this is our second information session. This is our second information okay. session. Uh, and we've been entertaining questions all through this period. This was just an opportunity for those who wanted to have a open dialogue to do this here. Uh, but there's been a, a number more um, interested. Okay. No, I, just, I, I was more asking if, if you were in the need of more applications that you were looking to extend it or whether, because you already extended it once. That was kind no, of a. Yeah. I don't think we'd want to. We wouldn't want to extend it. That would not be our choice. We really do. Okay. Would, we would like to get thorough applications by the 15th by midnight and, and move the process along. That is not, yeah, what I did not intend to think that or make anyone think that we want to extend this any further. No. We. We extended it the first time just because we got that budget uh, document together and insurance information. It was more on the budget side rather than um, being concerned that we weren't going to, uh, you know, sort of see enough artistic examples. Mm -hmm. um, the finalist is really a great opportunity for uh, the community to have input. That really is where the community begins to have some take on this insofar as letting us know what they engage with and what they connect with. Uh, and so that period is a, um, um, a dialogic one between the artist and the community, the artist and the, and the organizations. It's, it's not really blind, if you will, or pristine in the way that some uh, competitions can be. Uh, so there's an opportunity to carve back into questions that Fernando may put out with the budget to say, you know, this is getting the graffiti paint cost this, and is that something that you want? Or a question that Anne may present with how often, you know, this is how the community, I perceive how the community may be, but it's all going to be driven by our artistic vision. If that's strong, that's what's going to say, yes, let's get into this. Okay, thank you. Yes. Go ahead, Kendra. I've asked too many. You go, go ahead. Mm, okay. So, just because there are so many larger entities involved between the grants and the, and the DOT and whatnot, are we basing the salaries of the people that we choose to hire based off of prevailing union wage or are we self-determining wages? Okay. Yeah, you'll be self-determining. It's not, it's not prevailing. All right, cool, thanks. At the end of the day, this is a private um, project. This is not a government project, okay? At the end of the day, this is funded by private sources, um, overseen by nonprofits uh, with that in mind. 
my question had to do um, with lights. Is that something that the city would be comfortable attaching to um, the metal railings, I, for lack of a better word, whatever the metal is above the pylons? Uh, is that something that's even remotely possible, or is it something that I should just forget about it? Yeah. Or, or as work lights. Yeah. No, like permanent lights to illuminate that that space during the day and night. That's phase two. You oh. shouldn't forget about it, but that's phase two because we really need to make sure that we do it in a way that is um, safe, semi permanent, right? Because nothing's permanent in this world, but uh, has a, a, a life that is longer than your budget right now could allow. But do know that that is the intention that this artwork would be lit. Okay. In the next budget. Okay. And then my, my last question is about the rendering. Um, you guys list in the language, it says um, uh, pair, uh, piling pairs, which makes it suggest you want all the pilings to be paired, uh, but your limit is eight images. So I just wanted to make sure that um, that language, I'm reading that language right. I can answer that for you. So we're not expecting you to only put one image per document. So if you, you know, submit a file, there can be multiple images on it. When we're looking at the files, if you have pilings that are similar or the same, you don't have to show each individual. You just have to give us that vision of, okay, from here all the way down, these are all the same. This is what it looks like. We don't need each individual side. Okay. If they are different, then of course we're going to need to we're not going we're not going to need to see more imagery right we'll have to see all the way around and what you're you know what you're proposing to us from the from the east and from the west from the river and to the river um, so that's where that gets a little confusing and it's I understand the wording was challenging but in those documents when you submit them you can put multiple images on there depending on what view you're presenting to us okay and that, and related to that my design concept. Uh, is in, it integrates um, community input for the illustration. Uh, I've done a lot of illustration already for it, but a lot is still remains. Um, I explained that in the proposal, but some of my columns won't be able, you won't be able to see both sides because of that. Uh, I assume that's okay, yes? <laughs> as okay. long as you're explaining that to us in your proposal and being as clear as possible about what your vision is and what you propose, then yes, then that, that that's sufficient. Okay, thank you. That was my final question, thanks. And team, if we can't open up the document or if we see a blank page where we thought that there would be artwork or we get confused, we're gonna call you and ask you to clarify that. We're not going to just say, oh, they used the wrong format, out that goes. So there's, there's still gonna be an opportunity to say, could you clarify what we cannot understand? Okay, thank you. I have actually a question about the size of the document. Oh, you mean um, you mean actual millibytes or yeah? yeah. Because you, you said five megabytes is not a lot. If you are going to put more than you know, because there's a lot of, of these pillars, it's not going to be showing much even by enlarging. So my I question, mean, honestly, honestly, is, you know, um, honestly, it is it is really up to the program. Um, it holds mm -hmm. pretty large sizes. I can follow up and find out what the exact limitation is. Um, but five, meg five megabytes is fine for just displaying something. If you're using a larger file type or platform, it might be nice. It might be easier for you to send a link to something that helps us see the images as well. Okay. Because it, it is limited in size. I mean, sometimes people, when they are sending me videos, that's what I recommend. Or if they're sending anything with animation, because it doesn't always upload onto the uh, platform. Mm -hmm. Can I ask uh, to clarify, um, if I were an, inter an artist interpreting what you're saying here, um, I, I would think, okay, if I, if I need all four sides of 16 pillars to describe my concept and to make you understand it, then I need to show that. But if I clearly depict my concept um, and my design on a sampling of the pillars, that's okay. Like, is that right? Okay, good. thanks. 
you know, we're trying to make sure that this is something that you can represent your best work at. And so if you look and you think, oh, the rule seems a little bendy here or there, it's because we're trying to make sure that you can present this the way that you need to. So if submittable has a, um, a limitation that uh, prohibits you from presenting the project in, in the best way for you, send a link to it. Um, and that's that's really the best way that we can answer it. It's not to give one person a greater advantage than another. It's just being sensitive to us wanting to help you present your work the best way that it can be for, for you. The insurance thing I understand is a little bit of a of a different issue, and and you know we actually really didn't see it coming the way that we finally had to present it for you, but when the city said you know what happens if we've got an occurrence you know a year later around something that we can't really fully understand, that's when we really began looking at this kind of institutional nature of wanting to use a different kind of policy, um, so it just you know we're learning as well. <laughs> that's all I can say. Chris, you had a question. Yeah, uh, just curious, this, this rec uh, Zoom call is being recorded. Is there a way we can get a copy of that to review this information over again? 100%. Yes, I can do that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. So what I'll, what I'll do is we had a Zoom call the first time around, and I didn't get to editing it. So when people asked, I emailed it to them and just said, please excuse me, I haven't edited this yet. Um, so the same thing here, I'll try to edit this one, though, to make sure everything's online so you do have access to it. Um, it is the, the application is due on, on Monday, and today's Friday, so I'll do my best to get it up there, okay? All right, thank you very much. And, and actually, I have all of your emails, so as long as you're okay with that, um, you know, we can, we can send you any information you want if, if that's what you need. And so Chris can see the prior meetings yeah. as well? Okay. All right, excellent, thank you. Yes. Kendra? Unmute, okay. I noticed that um, we need to be cognizant of a need for power washing. Have these pylons been primed? I've driven under them, but I haven't stopped and gotten out. So um, I'll start with that, and that is that we are in touch with DOT to see how they are going to leave all of the pilings underneath. Um, we would love if that is how it will be, that it will be primed, but we don't have that answer yet, and we're assuming that it won't be at this point, okay. just to make sure that we budget correctly and, and hold the right expectations. Um, so as of right now, I would work thinking that it is not going to be primed before we start working. All right. Thank you. And again, if that blows up your budget, put a line in it says this is what that cost me. Um, because we 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 really wish we could um, ask them to do all of that. You know, other programs, it's much easier, but but this just isn't sorting out that way with the DOT. Let's just put it that way. But yeah. And, it, and the state's budget is a mess is really also the case. I mean, their, yeah. their budgets have blown up. And, and to be clear, we are asking quite insistently <laughs> every day um, <laughs> <laughs> that they should not be allowed to leave it. You know, it our project or not, they shouldn't be allowed to leave it that way. But we just don't have that, that answer yet. And so it's up to you whether to go across the whole thing with the prime coat first or just to figure on using certain colors that are gonna cover better or uh, knowing where you're gonna to have to do two, three coats instead of just one if there is not a nice clean prime. But the great news will be if we can announce that yes, they're gonna clean it and prime it, well then great. And then the, but the, the 125 sticks. Rachel? You sound like an odd question, but it was one of the ones on my list. I found it, Belinda. <laughs> um, once we submit our proposals, can we, are we encouraged? Are we restricted to discuss those with people we know in the community? Should we kind of keep them close? Should we shout them out to anybody who will listen? <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, is there sensitivity while they're while you're seeking that community feedback in that period between receiving submissions and selecting finalists, do you 
want it to stay a little more buttoned up or can we be as loud as we want to? Well, honestly, when we pick the five finalists, we are going to announce that and the community is going to know it and there's no hiding that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so I would say there's really no way of us controlling you being excited for being chosen. <laughs> um, and we will be excited for whomever yeah. chosen as well. So I would say that you don't have to keep it under wraps. Okay. Um, that I mean, I think once if you're the chosen artist, maybe um, at that point we can discuss if you want to announce what exactly everything is going to look like. But at that point, honestly, the community is already going to see your work. They're going to choose it. You know, we're all mm -hmm. going to be working with them to choose the correct work. So I, I have a follow up question, but, but Liz, why don't you jump can in? I, can I clarify, though? Yes. This is, we're not going to end up in some kind of click vote. This is not going to be some kind oh, of publicly okay. driven thing where we're going to put you guys into some kind of yeah. rampant fury to figure out how to collect your votes. All right. Feedback from the community means gaining an understanding of what the community identifies with, um, what project is actually executable, right? If one of you wants to hand pick butterfly wings and glue them on each day, it may not be the most executable project. Um, so some of that's going to play into here all right um that was my follow-up question mm -hmm. it was was going to be how are you planning to um engage the community in that feedback process we are going to hire a or we're going to work with the public affairs team to announce and make sure that the the world knows about these selections from mainstream media to community media to just make sure that first of all it's announced uh, then we will work with um, places like Collarworks that has a presence within the neighborhood that this is um, uh, the art center and tap to the degree that we're downtown, but that we can garner uh, interest in the project. We'll then work with uh, community, a community manager, if you will, to make sure it infiltrates into the community. It will not um, be a situation where we're going to ask you guys to go all into, you know, 15 visits to the Boys and Girls Club or this or that to be, to explain it. It's going to be okay. a little objective at that point and, and non, art, it, it's not going to be artist driven that feedback time period. Uh, Thank and you. And so, yeah. Now y'all want to do handpicked butterfly wings, don't you? <laughs> I know what Liz really wants. Um, <laughs> I just but, use it as an example, and I, I'm not cruel to animals, I promise you, but it always just makes a makes a clear statement that, and look at, hey, there's Chutney. Um, yeah. Chut. Um, <laughs> so in answering Rachel's question, you talked about how we're going to handle information, um, but the actual selection process involves community members as well. So... It, can you clarify that for? Are you talking to me? You? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's a, and first of all, so there's an artist committee as well. Um, we are building this as we speak, right? In terms of what the final way that this is going to look. Um, but our intention is everything from, it's COVID too, guys. So there's like this COVID factor in it. But we will be putting together posters of these five finalists and the posters are all going to have a same similar look so that there's a kind of uniformity to it and we can compare apples to apples. Those will be put on the site down at Hoosick Street for people to look at with maybe QR codes for those that are tech happy to look at and, and add, engage in it that way. Um, otherwise, they're going to be just kind of a static example of this is what's happening. They can be at Collar Work, they can be at the Art Center. Uh, they will be at places like the Boys and Girls Club. Not that it has to be a youth-driven thing, but just any way that we can to engage people. Uh, it will be on our website. It will be um, uh, in social media. And uh, we'll obviously engage the press to the degree that they can begin to put this material out. Um, we hope to then bring in a community activist who would say, let me get this a little further into it. And, and if they can safely, host a few events where we can garner some feedback, all of that being uh, based on the, on the uh, partners driving that feedback. It's very difficult for people to say yes or no directly to the artist. You know, you're standing in front of your poster and they're gonna tell you the truth of whether they do or don't like it. It can get a little touchy. So we're probably not gonna have it go that way. 
it's our assumption that that work will create enough feedback and that there's just going to be a, 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 a selection that's so clear that the community just drives towards that. The harder this is, the more we have to do. That timetable may need to get extended. The work may need to go deeper, right? So, so there's a little bit of an unknown of how long and how deep that feedback has to go. Um, so from that point, that's, that's a little unclear, but it will be filtered through partners. It will be filtered through a community manager, through a PR uh, person, not artist direct. Another question, Rachel, that I think you had, which might come up, um, there are metal runoff drain pipes affixed to some of the pilings. May these be incorporated into our work and painted in addition to the concrete? Barb, do you have an answer for that? Are those still gonna be there? Do you know if those are part of the actual bridge or if it's in addition? Yeah, no, I would assume that they are going to stay and yes, you can paint them into the, into the scenery. Anything that's solidly affixed after DOT leaves is uh, is going to be fair game. My my assumption, however, we will go peer by peer, and I'll make sure that DOT is, you know is aware of what we're painting. Also, she had the question, the same similar question. There are pilings that currently have markings to indicate their identity. Yeah. Um, will the artist be expected to incorporate any identifying labeling no. on the pilings? Um, uh, yeah or um, signage to be later installed. And then the other question with that is, can the private parking signage be removed so that you can paint behind it and then replace after we're done? Um, that's really great questions. Um, the scrawled spray paint numbers that they've identified all the peers with, that can be painted over. Uh, it's one of the reasons we're telling them they ought to prime the thing. Um, no parking sign, any, any signage like that, yeah, we should be taking that off, and I would think the city should be, you know, putting up nice, shiny new sign, signage. That's a really good point. I'll put that on my list and work with the city to have, um, and, and that's one of those logistical things. We can um, identify, walk it with the city, decide where they're going to put signs so it doesn't end up right in the eyeball of, of you know, some important, you know, figure, you know, that you give us or something. But we'll, we'll coordinate things like that. Thank you. So Dee, you had come in late. I just wanted to say hi and also let you know that this is being recorded. So what you didn't see right now, someone else had asked if they could get a copy of this just to get all the details. And there was a previous, um, there was a previous Q and A. Those will all be available for you and everyone else to have access to. I'll do my best to get it online, if not tonight, tomorrow, um, as early as I can, so you all can go ahead and go through this. Is there anyone else uh, with any further questions? It's eight o'clock and I just wanna, you know, make sure that you're all aware of the time. If you have anything else to talk about, we're here. Um, but we are also available online. If you can't think of anything right now, I'm continuing to respond to emails and share with the uh, the rest of the partners during the weekend um, and we're happy to answer any questions that we don't answer now. I just wanted to say thanks for the info session. I got to go, but I already bought two tons of butterfly wings, so I don't know what I'm going to do. About <laughs> um, but thanks so much and I look forward to working with you guys. Thanks, Fernando. Good to see you all you guys. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any more questions. I just wanted to make sure I put that out there. Thank you so much, everyone. I don't know if any of our partners have anything else to say. I think you know, we just want to say thank you for your interest in it. Um, we can't stress enough that we totally recognize that there's been some moving information on this regarding the budget, regarding Department of Transportation. Um, we will move right along with you and continue to be responsive around some of the final surfaces and uh, decisions that we have yet to make. Your vision will drive the project though. Um, those are details that please don't get tripped up on. What you want to do, what you want to say in the community, what you want it to look like, that's what's really going to drive the decision. All right, Barb, do you have anything else? Um, 
No, I think I'm good. Just that, yeah, we're available all weekend. So fire your questions. I know how it is to be putting a proposal together. <laughs> I'll, I'll be watching. If, if Belinda throws me something, I'll find it. Okay. And Elizabeth, you've been quiet tonight, but you have anything to add? Um, just to thank everybody uh, for the time and consideration that you're putting into submitting a rock star proposal to the panel to view. So I'm excited to see what you do. Thanks everybody. Really appreciate it. Have a good weekend. I'll look forward to your to your questions if you have any. If not, right. looking forward to your proposals. Yes, very exciting. Thank Thanks. you. See you soon. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.